So yeah, I'm going to talk today about um, a small research project I did on research support priorities and opportunities for collaboration, looking at the literature of LIS, the Library and Information Studies profession, and uh, Research Admin, which I'll refer to as RA throughout. Um, first of all, I thought I'd give you a little bit of context on where I'm coming from. The picture on the left is how I like to think of my university looking. Um, the picture on the right is a, in the interest of full disclosure, more realistic depiction of how it looks right now. Um, so we're a comprehensive, uh, comprehensive university in the Canadian prairies. We have 10 faculties. Some of them are divided into departments, so about 25 departments. We have a lot of interdisciplinary programs and um, research institutes that re across traditional disciplines. We have about 15,000 students of which uh, about 2,000 are graduate students. Most of those are masters, although an increasing number of PhD students as well. Um, this is a picture on the right of the main floor of the library where I work, the main library on our campus, and on the left is uh, some of the offices of the research admin staff. So how I got interested in this, I worked at the University of Regina for a number of years now, but last year I started in a new position, research and scholarship librarian. And one of my first tasks, um, identified for me to some extent, but um, I could see the necessity of it, was to reach out to the research office on campus and start to build some bridges between the library and the research office. Um, being a good librarian, I turned to the literature to see uh, what I could glean. Um, so, and uh, it will come as no surprise to anyone that there's lots of literature out there about um, uh, library support for faculty teaching and for student learning, uh, hundreds if not thousands of papers about information literacy, um, and a lot of literature about the importance of collaborating with other units on campus, student groups, uh, faculty, in terms of helping students to achieve um, their learning goals. There's been less evidence collected, uh, however, about how academic libraries can best support campus research. There have certainly been some reports, including RLUK's Reskilling for Research and ARL's New Roles for New Times, um, that suggest a range of research support services that library could and uh, libraries could and perhaps should be providing. Um, but when I look at the literature overall, there's been relatively li little uh, research conducted by librarians that includes the voices of others on campus who are involved in research support. Um, those outside the profession who have sort of similar goals in terms of advancing their research enterprise and supporting researchers. Um, there's been some, although certainly not an abundance of studies um, about uh, faculty members and uh, their perceptions of library support for their research, there's little documentation of efforts to reach out to others involved in facilitating campus research. So my study aimed to listen to some of the voices outside of LIS, but uh, those who are very interested in uh, academic, the academic research enterprise, um, to see what we can learn about their perspectives on campus um, research supports and the role of academic libraries in meeting those needs. So when I use the term research administrator, uh, it's somewhat nebulous, but in the context of this study, it's used to describe staff working in campus research offices that play a role in facilitating academic research. So specific job titles would include um, research office directors, uh, research funding officers, research facilitators, research contracts officers, compliance officers, uh, communi research communications staff, uh, among others. And research administrators are uniquely positioned to provide a different perspective on where the pressure points are and where libraries might have the biggest impact on campus research success. Um, these people work with individual researchers and learn about their stumbling blocks, learn about um, reasons for grant failure, learn and understand reasons for um, project incompletion. And they also have a holistic view that can see system-wide campus research support needs. So both librarians and research administrators regard themselves as integral to the mission of the university, but there's been virtually no documented dialogue between the two professions in the literature of either field. Um, so 
My study sought to analyze the recent literature of each profession to map the priorities and concerns of each with regards to research support. Um, and this took the form of a content analysis uh, using in vivo a graduate or a student assistant and I um, each coded some of the literature and sort of uh, came back and talked through it until we achieved consistency and then we went off and in close collaboration coded um, the, these bodies of literature. Um, there were certainly themes that I expected to see emerging in the literature when I started out, um, but I also added um, themes and coding categories as I went along um, because there were things that uh, emerged that I hadn't necessarily expected to see. So that was kind of the process um, that, we, that we went through. Um, then the coded articles were analyzed to ascertain and compare topics of concern and uh, that are addressed by the literature of each profession. Um, they were also studied to determine if research administrators were aware of library expertise and resources related to their concerns, as well as to suggest potential areas uh, for further library activity to support the research enterprise. Um, so essentially, what I was looking at was a content analysis of journal articles published in these um, two professions. So as far as journals um, in the research admin literature, the titles I looked at are up there. Um, and there seem to be three main journals um, that are sort of the professional literature um, for research administrators. So I included all three of those in my analysis. Um, as far as the LIS literature, um, I included um, the what I would consider the two major journals publishing about academic librarianship in North America, so the Journal of Academic Librarianship and uh, College and Research Libraries. And I also included two Canadian journals that publish across library sectors but include academic libraries. And these are the Evidence-Based Library and Information Practice as well as Partnership, the Canadian Journal of Library and Information uh, Practice in an attempt to up the Canadian content a bit in my analysis. Um, as far as limitations, only articles uh, addressing research topics were included. So when I came across articles that focused exclusively on uh, instructional technique for undergraduates, those were uh, not included in the analysis. And I also limited myself to um, articles published in the last five years. I thought this limitation um, made sense. It created a manageable project. And given the speed with which technology, research, and libraries are changing, I thought it would produce the most relevant results. So of course, the most basic analysis you can do um, in a content analysis is sort of a, a word, a word frequency search. Um, and there were a few interesting things that emerged from this preliminary step. Um, topics that were mentioned with similar frequency and frequently within the two literatures um, included journals, uh, community, publishing, public, data. Um, it, but there were also terms that uh, appeared very frequently in um, the research admin literature that didn't make it even into the top 100 terms in the LIS literature. Um, things like impact and culture. Um, conversely, there were terms that occurred um, frequently in the LIS literature that did not um, occur frequently in the research admin literature, not in the top 100. And these included terms like copyright, digitizing, citation, searching, technology, uh, repository, and open access. Um, of course, one question that interested me was, how often does the research admin refer to librarians as providers of services needed by researchers or as a potential partner for providing services and support? Um, and sadly, it was uh, two out of the 93 articles that I looked at. So, uh, and the mentions, the first one was kind of curious to me, um, talked about the, uh, a library off offering a fee-based editing service for researchers, which isn't something that most libraries I'm familiar with uh, offer, so that was, was a bit of a curiosity. And another, um, the other one provided a broad overview of library resources and facilities as evidence that an institution supports research. Um, but it was interesting that none of this body of work um, all of, through all of these articles made any mention of the services um, in support of research, uh, which we will see dominate the LIS literature on the topic. I also looked at uh, how often are librarians talking about 
research administrators, the research office, in their um, work about research support. And similar kind of numbers, you know, you look at 3% of the articles, um, and they were, these mentions were in the context of RDM, research data management, um, the undergraduate re research experience, and scholarly communication. Um, I thought it was interesting, there was one article that um, uh, really looked at, you know, a bit, uh, on undergraduate research that kind of looked at the relationship between these, um, you know, the, the two disciplines. And uh, the article said, and I quote, one library cited lack of communication between the library and the undergraduate research office. One had attempted to convince the undergraduate research office of the value of library-specific support, only to have failed in the endeavor. So there's my little sad face about that. <laughs> um, so those were sort of some basic um, takeaways from a, a very surface-level look at the literature. Um, and then we got into our deep dive, which was our coding and our thematic analysis of the literature. Um, to look at different representations and perspectives on specific concepts um, and really focusing on um, what, is, what, what um, topics and themes are um, prevalent in the literature of one discipline, not in the other, um, as well as what are shared concerns and how are those manifested um, differently or the same between the two disciplines. So first of all, there were certain themes that were prominent in the research admin literature, but not in the library literature. Uh, and there were some that were no surprise to me. Um, obviously, the role of the research administrator, the research officer in institutional research is going to be of interest to their literature, um, much more so than the LIS literature. Um, I also found that there was a lot of talk about research ethics in the research admin literature, um, less so, well, very little in the LIS literature. Again, not surprising, because certainly in North America, America, um, research ethics offices um, typically reside within the research admin structure. I was a little more curious to see the, uh, that there was an emphasis in the RA literature that did not appear in the library literature on institutional culture and institutional, institutional research culture and institutional um, research strategy. I thought that was interesting um, because I think my library and a lot of libraries I'm familiar with really do see ourselves as an essential um, part of the institutional research culture, but um, perhaps we're not communicating that in the same kinds of terms or in the same direct way um, that the research admin literature is addressing that topic. And research collaboration was something that was a much more um, prevalent topic in, um, in the research admin literature, which was interesting as well because um, my university is involved with a lot of collaborative research projects. There's been a lot of issues come up related to um, data management for collaborative research projects. Um, access to resources um, from people for di from different institutions. So we certainly have dealt with a lot of issues around research collaboration, but those were not finding their way into the library literature. Um, and of course, I wanted to look at the flip side. So what kinds of things are prominent in the library literature, but not appearing in the research admin literature? And again, there were things that didn't surprise me. So the information needs of researchers, you know, that's kind of our ball of wax. So I, I was not surprised to see that uh, dominate in the, research, or in the library literature. The librarian role in institutional research and library collections, and particularly digital collections. However, there were some things that I was surprised to not see in the research admin literature that were um, very heavy themes in the library literature. And these included repositories, um, subject repositories, but also institutional repositories. Research data management was very, only very uh, rarely mentioned in the research admin literature. Citation analysis and, analysis and bibliometrics, as well as scholarly communication and open access. Um, there were topics that were in common. So those were some of the areas where there was a significant difference in what uh, the literatures were addressing um, in terms of research topics, research support. Topics in common included research funding, particularly grants, research impact, research infrastructure, research methodologies, as well as use of research. But, um, despite the fact that these were topics uh, in common, um, they were dealt with in very different ways, and the concerns within these broader categories uh, were very different uh, between the literatures of the two professions. They seem to be kind of going in diverging directions, I think, in thinking about this. 
Um, so, and these are all pictures from my university. Only in Saskatchewan do we get our donations where the president is outside wearing her toque and scarf. Um, so uh, research funding is one topic that um, was a dominant theme in the literature of both disciplines, but very dim different emphasis. So in the library literature, um, discussions of research funding uh, focused almost exclusively on issues around open access. So requirements of funding agencies, APCs, author funds, there were a few exceptions. Um, uh, two articles that spoke about um, the librarian role in grant applications, one that talked about librarians leading workshops for graduate students on funding opportunities. But by and large, um, mentions of funding and funding issues in the library literature on research support talked about open access and the funding challenges associated with that. Um, the research, research admin literature uh, was much more diverse and interestingly enough never mentioned open access or scholarly communications as a research funding issue at all. Um, instead it focused on collaborative grant writing with community partners, internal funding programs to build capacity for larger grant applications and institutional readiness and support for um, large grant applications. Um, so what are the implications of this for, for my role or our practice? Um, I think uh, we need to realize that research administrators may not be seeing open access and scholarly communication as a funding issue, um, both in terms of grant requirements and the funds required to meet grant criteria. Um, to me, this suggests that there's a potential education role we could be playing in um, ensuring that they understand the financial implications of the, the scholarly communications infrastructure and perhaps help us as advocates to um, make changes to that system. Another topic that um, was, was addressed in the literature of both of these uh, fields was research impact. In the LIS literature, the vast majority um, of these articles on research impact were citation analyses or bibliographic studies assessing the literature of specific disciplines. Um, there were assessing the literature of specific disciplines um, often with an eye to what are the collection development implications of those. There were also some uh, other citation studies that looked at um, the impact of specific library services or practices on research impact. So, um, for example, the use of interlibrary loan um, and its relation to institutional research impact. Um, the research admin literature was very different again. Um, the primary focus there was the social and community impact of research, as well as the complexities and difficulties of assessing impact of research. Again, um, there was a totally different focus um, in discussions of research impact among the two professions. Um, some thoughts that I had around this were, could we broaden our studies of research impact um, beyond citation to other topics and recognize um, and explore research uh, impact methodologies that extend beyond citation analysis? Um, you know, and to think about what else can we contribute to um, studies of research impact, as well as how we can educate research administrators on the role that we can play in, um, in assessing research impact or helping them in those discussions at any rate. Research methodologies, here's some of our students out by the creek who are doing their turtle research. Turtle research seems to be a big thing right now. Um, so there was also a, a fair bit of work where for a number of articles where research methodologies were the focus or the subject matter of the articles. Um, in the LIS uh, literature, more than three quarters of these articles talking about research methodologies um, were reviews of various re research methodologies that can be employed in LIS. Um, and this differed somewhat from the research admin literature, which explored various research methodologies, research methodologies but they were all written pretty much all written from the perspective of a researcher who had used a particular methodology and was talking about the challenges associated with implementing it. Um, so LIS was sort of the general overview of a method that, and it wasn't contextualized in any way. This was interesting to me um, in suggesting new ways to increase librarian knowledge around research methodologies. I'm involved in the Librarians Research Institute in Canada and 
we uh, often find that uh, librarians don't know a lot and want to know more about um, the potential for different research methodologies in their own work. So this suggested to me that there may be um, different ways that we can be demonstrating to them the opportunities and challenges associated with specific methodologies. Research infrastructure. Um, research infrastructure, the LIS literature focused on, and I'm sure this is no surprise to anyone, what could be called digital research infrastructure. Um, and a quarter of the articles on digital research infrastructure um, focused on specific search tools. So things like um, PubMed versus Google Scholar, um, those kinds of things. Another quarter of the articles on this topic talked about um, scholarly communications infrastructure, so open access and institutional repositories. And almost another quarter talked about infrastructure for research data management. Um, in this whole body of literature, there was only really uh, two articles that talked about um, physical infrastructure in the library literature, and those were in terms of the needs of graduate students. Um, in the research admin literature, um, they talked about sort of those research admin systems that they have that manage um, the research process right from the initial funding application to research outputs. But by and large, they seem to um, start with specific needs. So um, research funding need or research grants, um, ethical conduct of research, research communication, and, um, and then talk about um, you know, different ways to meet that need. And I thought that was kind of interesting because the LIS literature really focused, started with a tool or a solution and figured out how could work towards how can we use this. And the research admin literature almost went the other way where it started with sort of a problem or an issue and then looked at potential solutions. Um, so I thought that was interesting. And then finally, use of research. Um, so use of research was again uh, a topic that recurred throughout the literature of both fields. In the LIS literature, uh, fully half of the articles addressing use of research focused on knowledge mobilization in academic libraries. Um, and the remaining half um, talked about um, the role of open access in increasing the use and uptake of citation of literature. Um, the research admin literature focused on knowledge transfer, knowledge mobilization, and community engagement. And all of these um, works in the research admin literature emphasized getting knowledge out beyond the traditional academic environment to industry, to the public, to policymakers. So it was very interesting to me that none of them mentioned open access, um, because to me that's um, one of the big um, one of the most appealing things about open access is the potential to extend the reach of research beyond academia. And certainly, research administrators were not seeing or talking about um, open access as a way to achieve what seemed to be a very important goal to them. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Um, it suggested to me that there may be an appetite among research administrators to learn more about open access and the potential that it holds. Um, and you know that there is potentially an educational role for librarians there um, and uh, an opportunity to reach out and collaborate with research administration in advancing um, open access as, as a policy and an approach within an institution. So basically, um, my conclusion after all of this, this was that there are bridges to be built. Um, well, there are definitely some areas of shared concern and focus between the literature of the two professions. There's little conversation or cross-referencing going on. We really seem to be working as two solitudes in research support. This means that we miss out on opportunities to expand uh, our role in research support, uh, to highlight our contributions, to collaborate with new partners, and ultimately um, to further enhance the services that we offer to researchers. I want to just conclude by acknowledging Carl gave me a small research and librarianship uh, grant to conduct this research, and uh, my cool dude research assistant, John Cap, who was the most excellent at coding. So mm -hmm. thank you.